Ade TV KPM. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Anda sedang menonton Road to Success STPM 2020 bersama saya, Ellie Arifin. Ya, macam biasa, hari ini kita akan membincangkan dengan adik-adik di rumah serta adik-adik dalam talian bersama dengan cikgu yang akan mengajar pada hari ini bagaimana untuk menjawab kertas soalan peperiksaan STPM ataupun untuk tingkatan 6. Ha, subjek yang kita akan belajar pada hari ini adalah Biologi. Biologi ni sudah tentulah adik-adik boleh tahu kalau sebut biologi je mesti ada kena-mengena dengan sains, ada kena-mengena dengan pembedahan haiwan dan sebagainya. Macam-macam skop pekerjaan boleh digunakan uh, menerusi subjek biologi ini. Okey, tak nak kita tak nak buang masa. Sebelum itu kita berkenalan dulu dengan cikgu kita. Jom kita saksikan profil guru sekarang. Itu dia, Cikgu Charles Ligunjang Junior merupakan Cikgu Subjek Biologi yang mengajar di Sekolah Tingkatan 6. Eh, Kolej Tingkatan 6 eh, Cikgu? Betul. Kolej Tingkatan 6, 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6
dan membasahi kita punya apa ini uh, spesimen tu. Mm -hmm. Jadi bila spesimen tikus tu penuh dengan darah merah, jadi susah pelajar nak meneruskan proses pembedahan tu. Oh. Uh, jadi pelajar sebelum mereka memulakan eksperimen tu memang kena baca manual, mm -hmm. study manual tu betul-betul dan bila membedah tu bedah secara mengikut manual lah mm -hmm. dan mengikut cara yang terbaik lah. Oh, okay. uh, jadi dalam uh, perkongsian kita ataupun pembelajaran kita pada hari ini, cikgu akan berkongsi uh, cerita mengena, uh, kata pembelajaran mengenai nak jawab soalan. Betul. Tetapi uh, kata ujian makmal ini ada juga ke dalam perisa STPM itu untuk mungkin bahagian praktikal ke ada? Okey. Untuk eksperimen ini, jika pelajar yang tidak membuat kerja khusus, okay, selalunya calon khas, calon uh, swasta, mereka kena duduki satu kertas khas di dalam kertas itu kertas bertulis mm -hmm. tapi dia melibatkan semuanya eksperimen-eksperimen secara teori. Oh. Jadi okay. sebaiknya sebaiknya nasihat saya kepada um, SPM Leavers okey mm -hmm. yang mau masuk form 6 tu masuk dalam form 6 dan ikut dia punya flow dan ambil eksperimen tu. Jalankan eksperimen kerja khusus yang telah diberikan oleh cikgu-cikgu anda. Mm -hmm. Dan memang boleh buat a uh, Kertas satu, kertas dua, kertas tiga biologi itu dengan mudah sekali. Okey, cikgu. Sebelum kita memulakan perkongsian atau pembelajaran kita hari ini, apa kita, kita ke sana untuk kita sanitasi tangan kita dulu. Okay, boleh, cikgu? Boleh. Ah, mari, mari. Okey, saya akan sanitasi tangan saya dulu. Dan saya ulang lagi sekali. Ah, silakan, cikgu. Okey. Dan okay. saya ulang lagi sekali kepada murid-murid uh, di rumah juga yang sedang menonton sekarang ini. Jangan lupa untuk menjaga penjarakan sosial anda dan uh, sentiasa kerap Sanitasi tangan, cuci tangan dan memakai pelitup muka setiap kali keluar dari rumah. Kita boleh buka kita punya pelitup muka, cikgu. Okey. Ah, okey. Ha. Barulah nampak rupa head cikgu yang kacak ni. Ah. Biasa saja. Biasa biasa saja. Okey, cikgu simpan boleh simpan ini. dalam Simpsi. sarung untuk uh, apa? kebersihan kita. Dan uh, kita nak saksikan dulu vox pop daripada murid-murid berkenaan dengan subjek biologi ni. Boleh cikgu? Boleh. Okey, silakan. Dedek TV KPM. Hi, comment. Hi there. So my name is Arina, and I'm from College Tingkatan Enam Shah Alam. I'm a bio student, and I'm in my third semester. So I'll be taking my bio P3 paper soon, and I'm quite nervous. Um, so I wanted to ask if there's any way, easier way for me to remember the facts, so I can easier remember them. I also wanted to know if there's a certain way I should be writing my answers during the exam. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum dan hai. Di sini saya ingin memberi pendapat tentang subjek biologi. Bagi saya, subjek ini merupakan satu subjek yang menarik dan mudah difahami kerana topik yang kita pelajari dalam subjek ini berkait dengan kehidupan seharian kita dan juga persekitaran kita. Contohnya, Bagaimana tumbuhan itu boleh menjalankan proses fotosintesis? Melalui subjek ini, kita akan mempelajari dengan lebih mendalam bagaimana proses fotosintesis itu terjadi. Hello, my name is Teng Seng Ching and I'm currently studying in College Tingkatan Nam Shah Alam. And I'm a biology student. This is my final sem, so I'm going to take paper 3 biology soon. And I want to ask if there's any tips or tricks for me to memorize those facts easier and or to understand a certain topic easier. Is there any tips or tricks that you can show me, Mr. Charles? Thank you. Bye bye. Dede TV KPM. Baiklah, itu antara box pop daripada orang kata, suara hati murid-murid um, ataupun calon-calon STPM untuk uh, 2020 ni. Jadi, cikgu ada murid-murid uh, yang tanya um, ada tak tips dan triks akan diajar pada hari ini uh, tentang subjek biologi? Ada. Ada? ada. Ah, rahsia cikgu selama ini memang cikgu akan bagi kepada adik-adik sedang menonton sekarang ini. Jadi, kita nak berehat sebentar. Sementara cikgu kumpulkan dulu aura-aura ada punya tips ni untuk diberikan serahkan kepada adik-adik kita kembali selepas ini dalam Road to Success STPM 2020. Didik TV KPM. Didik TV KPM. 
Kembali di Road to Success STPM 2020 bersama saya Ellie Arifin dan juga kita ada Cikgu Charles Junior yang merupakan Cikgu di Kolej Tingkatan 6 Shah Alam. Juga kita akan belajar subjek biologi bagaimana kita nak menjawab kertas soalan STPM untuk subjek biologi hari ini. Okey Cikgu. Okey ke cikgu kat sana? Okey. Cikgu masih kacak bergaya di sana? Boleh. <laughs> Okey, cikgu Charles mungkin boleh kongsikan hari ini kita ada murid-murid yang bersama dengan kita dalam talian. Ada. Ah yang merupakan anak murid cikgu juga? Betul. Ah okey. Jom kita berkenalanlah dengan murid-murid anak murid cikgu ni yang merupakan murid dari Kolej Tingkatan 6 Shah Alam dalam talian. Apa khabar semua? Ah dia ada dua eh cikgu. Betul. Satu lagi dari? Pusat Tengkatan 6 Maktab Sabah. Ah, ada dua daripada Maktab Sabah. Okey, mungkin boleh cikgu perkenalkan murid cikgu seorang-seorang? Okey. Um, Rosha, she's one of my student from from Six College Shah Alam. Okey. Okay, Pusat Tengkatan 6 Shah Alam. Boleh perkenalkan diri? And then diri? we have um, Ranjita. Mm -hmm. Then we have Vishwa. Mm -hmm. Okey. And then we have Wei Tom. Okey. Okey. And then uh, students from... Pusat Tingkatan 6 Maktab Sabah, okay, my former school. Okay, we have uh, Viani and Maiza. How are you, candidates? Are you uh, good? Okay. Mungkin murid-murid <laughs> boleh letak tangan di dada dan uh, buka mic dan uh, uh, beri salam sejahtera kepada Cikgu Charles. Uh, buka mic, on mic. Ah. Hello, Mr. Charles. Hi, Hello, Mr. Charles. Uh, Hello, Mr. Charles. Are you good? Okay, semua dah bersedia, good. eh? Untuk belajar ataupun memahami tips untuk menjawab soalan peperiksaan, kertas peperiksaan biologi. Eh? Ah, okey, okay, cikgu boleh mulakan. Saya pun dah tak sabar ni. Saya tengok okay. tikus sudah kena bedah kat tengah tu. Okey, boleh. <laughs> okey, now good morning. Good evening everyone. Sorry for the time and space uh, confusion here. Okey, so I'm Mr. Charles Junior. Okey, cikgu Charles. Cikgu Nyon Junior or cikgu Charles. Okey, formally. Okay. Normally, they call, my students call me cikgu Charles. Alright, and I'm from... Kolej Tingkatan 6 Shah Alam and I'm a biology teacher. Okay? Now, before I proceed, students, do you have any question to ask me? Maiza, do you have any question, Maiza? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, okay, Maiza. Uh, saya mau tanya, um, kan we know yang uh, biology is fact, fakta, yang banyak betul kita mau hafal. Jadi, betul. ada kat tips untuk uh, macam mana kita mau hafal tu fakta-fakta biologi yang terlampau banyak tu? Okay, Maiza, thank you for your question. Yes, okay, I do have some tips, okay, on how you should study biology. Yes, when it comes to biology, okay, there are so many facts to study. Okay, memang tiada boleh lari, lari. Biology ni banyak fakta, okay, dalam buku-buku. Okay, now, without any further ado, okay, let's go to the tips on how to study biology. Okay, now, first things first is have a calm, calm your mind and body. Okay, when you calm your mind and body, you can focus more. Okay, how do you calm your mind and body? First is pray, okay, pray, and then second is respect your teachers and your parents, okay. When you respect your parents and teachers and pray as well, like what I mentioned earlier, okay, it's easier for the knowledge to flow within your bloodstream to your cerebrum. So this in turn will make you easy to focus your in your study, okay. All right. Second tips, okay, question analysis. Do all the passes question now in biology? You can't escape. You can't spot questions. Right, every chapters will be asked in the exam, okay, especially in section A. Okay, every chapter will come out two questions from every chapter. Sorry, okay, memang tidak boleh escape. Maksudnya, calon tidak boleh spot topik mana nak belajar. Tidak boleh macam tu. Semua chapter memang akan ditanya dalam peperiksaan. Okay, so jika calon suka menganalisis soalan-soalan pasias. Boleh, tetapi my advice is every chapters will be asked in the exam, right? So you can't escape. Okay. Next, okay. Always revise your notes. Do your own notes as well. Okay. There are many ways how you can make your own notes. We have corner method. We have mind maps, right? Okay. So you can use these uh, variations to study biology. Okay. You can't just um, listen. To your teachers, I mean, listen. I'm um, in the uh, classrooms, okay. When your teacher teach, you just listen and that's it. No, or just read from the textbooks. No, it doesn't go that way, okay. You are now in form six, okay. So you have to do your own notes, okay. 
Next, buy yourself a good biology textbook. Okay, now I highly recommend you buy the Campbell biology textbook. You know why? Because most of the examiners they use this textbook as their main source of reference. Okay, when they mark the paper. Okay, other than Campbell biology textbook is we have Solomon textbook. Sorry, Solomon biology textbook as well as Reese biology textbooks. These are international um, standard textbooks. Okay. Okay, the fifth tips. All right, do not study last minute. Okay, I'm sure most of these candidates they study last minute. Don't do that when you are stressed. Okay, this will kill your brain cells, and you don't want that to happen to you. Right, when your brain cells, some of them are dead or killed. What happened is, okay, you won't be able to focus or remember what you have studied. So do not stress yourself. Okay, don't study last minute. Okay, so these are the five tips I can share with you on how to study biology. Okay, mm. candidates, are you good, Maiza? Okay. Okay, sir. All right. Okay. Cikgu, saya nak tanya. Yes. Um, untuk jawab kertas uh, soalan biologi ni lah bahasa Inggeris ke dalam bahasa Melayu? Okay. Untuk biologi STPM, mm -mm. calon boleh menjawab dalam bahasa Inggeris ataupun bahasa Melayu. Oh, boleh ada pilih. Dua pilihan. Yes. Ah. Tetapi calon tidak digalakkan menjawab mencampurkan bahasa Melayu dan bahasa Inggeris. Okay. Maksudnya masih dia menulis tu, dia sedang menulis dalam bahasa Inggeris kan? Ha -ha. Dan dia campur bahasa Melayu di sana. Ha. Tidak boleh. Oh, tidak boleh. Yes. Dan biologi dia punya menggunakan terminologi. Okay. So terminologi jika calon menjawab dalam bahasa Melayu, okay. mesti menggunakan terminologi biologi dalam bahasa Melayu. I see. Begitu juga dalam bahasa Inggeris. Okay, so candidates, if you write your essay or your exam in English, make sure your biology terminologies are also written in English. Alright. Ah, Kira-nya kalau apa? ada uh, terms-terms bahasa Inggeris pun, uh, walaupun jawab dalam bahasa Melayu pun boleh juga gunakan terms bahasa Inggeris tu. Okay, tidak boleh. Calon, ah, tidak jika boleh. jawab dalam bahasa Melayu, kena guna terminologi tu dalam bahasa Melayu punya. Ah, okay, okay. okay. Terus sama, right. saya guna silakan, silakan. Okay. Okay, now general tips on how you can tackle the paper. Okay. Now, first things first. Okay, this uh, go concurrently with your uh, um, calm mind and body. Okay. First things first is relax. When you receive the question paper, you relax. Okay, and read through the entire question paper in five minutes. Now, <clears throat> the reason why is for you to know which, especially the section C which essay questions you want to answer. You know already, right, that you have three question, uh, essay questions and you need to answer two essay questions. So, okay, so when you read, go through, this is five minutes, so you are getting yourself ready which question to be answered. Okay. Next, always write your answers with neat and readable handwriting. Okay, most candidates, when they write their answers, they are uh, handwriting is barely uh, readable. Okay, so when this happens, what happens? Okay, what happen? What happening is that you are on the verge of losing marks because your the examiners is very difficult for them to read your answers. Okay, so make sure your handwriting okay uh, readable and neat and use a medium ball pen instead of a gel ink pen. Why? Because the gel ink will it will smear the paper. So we don't want that to happen. And then when you smear the paper, what happens? Your E will appear like an A or O. Okay. Do not use correction liquid or correction tape okay, to erase unwanted answer. Because the ink below the correction liquid or tape will reappear after a few days. And this will confuse the examiners. Okay. Just cross out the wrongly written answer and write down your uh, desired answers. This is as simple as that. Okay. Manage your time wisely so that you have uh, time to recheck your answers. Candidates, are you good with me, students? Ranjita, yes. Vishwa? All right, yes, Pritam. Okay, thank you, <laughs> candidates. Okay, now, before I proceed with section A, candidates, do you have any uh, questions you want to ask about the general tips other than that, those that I have given to you? Okay, I take that as a no. All right. Okay, so I assume all of you understood. All right. Do you? Okay. Thank you. Okay, now, section A. Okay. This section has fifteen questions. Okay, and candidates have to answer all those questions. Fifteen questions. All right. And these fifteen questions will come 
with together with 15 marks. So meaning to say one question represent one mark, right? So 15 multiple choice questions, right? This is more specific. Now, spend only one minute per question, okay? And overall time allocation for section A, advisable is 15 to 20 minutes. If you are stuck at one particular question, just move to the next question after one minute and 30 seconds. Do not wait longer, okay? You can always come back to that particular questions later on, okay? Because in biology exam, time is your number one enemy, okay? Okay, candidates, um, do you have any question? No uh, question? Nampaknya ada, uh, ni, lotionnya. Okay, lotion. Cikgu, saya yes. dapati jawapan dalam section A almost semua hampir sama dan sama uh, betul. So, bagaimana nak choose jawapan yang betul? Okay, good question, Losia. Okay. Mengubah soalan. Bila mereka mengubah soalan biologi ni, yes, memang option jawapan A, B, C itu A, B, C, D memang hampir sama, okay? They are similar, but they are not the same. So calon for session A, calon candidates, you must have good knowledge or good content, good biology content, okay, on what you have studied. This will help you, okay, on how to um, choose the right answer amongst those four options. Okay, now. We take one example of this question, okay, Losha? Uh, which will not affect population growth? So we have four options here, A, B, C, D, which is migration, mortality, mutation, and natality. Now, first things first is you cross out the answer which is unrelated to the question or which is obviously wrong, okay? Again, which will not affect population growth? Migration, does migration affect population growth? It does, right? In migration, what happens? A population will move out from a certain habitat or niche. So the current population will decrease. The number of the current population will decrease, obviously. So this is obviously a wrong option of answer. So just cross it out. Okay? Mortality is dead. When a small number of population is dead in one big population, what happens to the number of the population? Obviously, it will decrease. So cross out mortality, okay? And then mutation. Does mutation increase or decrease a number of a population? Mutation. It does not. Mutation, it doesn't uh, change the number of a population. Okay, so apparently C is the answer. But we have another option here, natality or birth rates. Okay, in natality, what happened to the number of the populations? Obviously, it will increase. So this will in turn affect the population growth of a population. So this is not the option answer. So now, earlier of this question, all four options are very similar, correct? But after we cross out A, B, and D options, only C is being left here. Again, if you have good knowledge on what is mutation, you should be able to pick up the correct answer, which is mutation. Okay, so the first tip how to tackle section A is cross out the answer which is unrelated to the question or which is obviously wrong. Do not throw the dice. Okay, <laughs> because most of the candidates you will throw the dice. Okay, don't do that. Okay, you just go through the options, the answer options. You should be able to figure it out. All right, another question. Okay. Read the questions carefully and pay attention to the keywords like accept, not, true, false, or true. Okay, sorry, accept, not true, false, or true. Okay, now for this particular question, the true here, which are true about continuous variation. Apparently, the true here is not being bold or underlined. So candidates, it is up to you. You must be able to identify these keywords. Okay. Okay, now we have one, two, three, and four sub-answers uh, options here. Okay, number one shows a discrete um, distribution. Okay, number two, the characteristics that can be measured, not affected by the environmental factors. Two or more genes control the same characteristic. Continuous variation means something that is changeable, keeps on changing, it's not fixed. Okay, 
keyword here is continuous. Now, shows a discrete distribution. This is being shown by discontinuous variation. So, this is not a good choice of answer. Okay? And then, the characteristics that can be measured, yes, when something changing, you can measure, like your height or weight. So, this is probably one of the answer option. Okay? Not affected by environmental factors. Okay. These continuous variations are affect, uh, sorry, are not affected by environmental factors. While continuous variation, they are affected by environmental factors. Okay. So this is not a choice answer. Okay. And number four, two or more genes control the same characteristic. Yes like your height is being controlled by polygenes, right? Right, Ranjita? You have learned that, right? Okay, good. Yes, sir. Thank you, Ranjita. So, we have two and four. So, from A, B, C, and D, apparently, D will give you the two and four, right? Okay, class? So, after this, no more uh, throwing out the dice, okay? Okay, so, that's it on section A. Okay, only two questions to discuss with you. Those are the passive questions, all right? Okay, now, section B. You have to answer all the questions. Okay, and there are two questions here. And one question will carry either seven or eight marks. And the total of these two questions will give you 15 marks. Okay? Now, spend seven to eight minutes okay, per question here. Overall time allocation is... Uh, 15 minutes. So, meaning to say for section A and section B, you have 15 minutes for section A and 15 minutes for section B. Okay, now for section B, again, is the question number 16 and 17. So, either question 16 has carry or carry 7 marks or 8 marks, and then the other question, which is number 17, will carry 8 or 7 marks, vice versa. Okay, but the, the total marks will be 15 marks. Okay, cikgu, cikgu ada nak tanya soalan dekat calon-calon uh, STPM dalam talian sekarang? So, yes. kita nak ke uh, kita nak berehat selepas ini? Okay, can you guys have question to ask me about ha. section B? Ada soalan-soalan cepu mas ke yang macam ah susahnya soalan struktur ni. Maybe they have later. Ah, tu Vianney, so. Vianney. Vianney, you have? Ah, uh, sekiranya saya menjawab soalan dalam bahasa Melayu dan saya terlupa terms yang uh, patut saya tulis dalam bahasa Melayu, bolehkah saya tulis dalam bahasa Inggeris? Okay, thank you, Vanny. Thank you. Now, soalan Vanny tu menjurus kepada tips saya yang ini, cikgu yang ini. Mm -mm. Okay, if you write your answer in bahasa Melayu, make sure the biology terms used are also in bahasa Melayu. Need to say, if you write your answer in English, the biology terms must be written in English too. You can't mix them. What happens if you mix them? Let's say you write your answer in bahasa Melayu. But when you write the terms, it is being written in English. You don't get marks for that. Allah, okay? sayangnya. Yes. Contohnya macam sporophyte generation. This when it is being written in English. But in Bahasa Melayu will be generasi sporophyte. Hmm. Sangat berbeza. Kalau letak yang macam apa apostrophe itu pun tak boleh juga, cikgu? Tidak boleh juga. Tidak dimaafkan? Tidak dimaafkan. <laughs> okey, okey. Cikgu ada nak sambung tentang penjelasan di sini sebelum kita ke kita berehat? Ada. Dia okay. bahagian soalan nombor perbincangan. Ah. Soalan nombor 16 dan 17. Okay. Tips dan seterusnya lagi. Okey, kita rehat dulu boleh cikgu? Boleh, ah. tiada masalah. Kita bagi uh, calon-calon STPM ni ambil nafas dulu sebelum mereka ber orang kata sambung untuk uh, orang kata serap segala ilmu-ilmu yang diberikan oleh Cikgu Charles Junior ni. Kita rehat sebentar kembali di Road to Success STPM 2020. Dede TV KPM Dede TV KPM Kembali di Rotor Success STPM 2020 bersama saya Elia Arifin dan hari ini kita akan mempelajari bagaimana nak menjawab kertas soalan peperiksaan STPM bersama dengan Cikgu Charles Junior daripada Kolej Tingkat 6 Shah Alam berkenaan dengan subjek biologi. Okey Cikgu, dah bersedia Cikgu? Ya, bersedia. Okey, bersama ya. dengan calon-calon STPM 2020 dah bersedia di dalam talian? Okey. Baiklah Cikgu, silakan. Okay, candidates as well as candidates at home, okay, the viewers, right, including the parents. Now, 
Now we continue with section B, okay, which is the structured questions, okay, and then this uh, consists the question number sixteen and seventeen. Okay, now the first tip will be, okay, when you get the question paper, okay, so you'll be seeing many types of questions here. Now, for this example, we have state the types of curves and their shapes for this particular question. Now, when states, okay, the question reads states, meaning to say only stating the answers without further explanation or reasoning. Okay, just state it out, the answer. Okay, and then the length of your answer is based on the answer space given and the marks allocated. So you can see here, okay, the space given here is relatively is very short and only two marks. So meaning to say your answer will be very short and simple. So this for, for this particular question, it will be, okay, exponential curve for P. Okay, I think most of you know this already, exponential curve. And Q is sigmoid curve. All right, and then the shape, okay, of this uh, curve is known as for P is J shape. You can know, you can see from the shape here is J shape, and then the Q is S shape. Okay, betul kan? I'm sure of your family of this already. Okay, biology. Okay, next question. Okay, oh, sorry, continuation from the uh, 16 question. What is meant by carrying capacity of the environment? Okay, now. Candidates at home, as well as this uh, candidate sitting for the uh, sit go currently going to sit for the biology paper, write specific answer. Okay, do not use it both them or they. This applies to the essay questions too. Okay. Okay. For B, what is meant by current capacity of the environment? Okay, so it's the maximum population size of an individual species that an environment can sustain. Two marks here. Two marks are being allocated here. So one mark, okay, when you write this definition, okay, and then another mark when you write this particular um, definition, okay? Extension from the uh, previous uh, definition. And then give two factors which may limit the size of the carrying capacity of the environment. Okay, and then as we reach this particular question, you know already, you must straight away write your answer. Okay, you don't have to rewrite the question. So the answer will be availability of food, availability of water, as well as habitat space. Most of these candidates, okay, they will write food, water, or habitat. Okay, so I mean to say your answer is um, sort of like incomplete. Okay. So, if food, in what terms of food? So, the easiest way is availability of food. The same goes for availability of water. Okay, and then when it comes to habitat, it should be habitat space. Okay, okay next question. Describe the characteristics of curves P and Q. Okay, two marks are being allocated here. The question read describe. Okay, now when describe, it means the answer are detailed but fixed. Cannot be manipulated and reasoning is unneeded. So meaning the answer, meaning to say the answer is not that detailed. Okay? Sorry, it is detailed but fixed. It's based on facts that you have learned in the textbook or from your teachers. Okay? It doesn't need uh, further reasoning. Okay? Now, other than this question, another example of question is like describe the DNA replication process where you just describe the process from A to Z, okay? From the opening of the fork until how the DNA uh, recoil back, okay? Now, let's go back to this question. Describe the characteristic of curves P and Q. So you may refer to this diagram here, curve P and curve Q, okay? How do you describe the curve P and Q? Okay, so the detailed answer will be for P, the population density grows without restrictions. Okay, now when you write, when you use the word it, normally candidate will, will write it grows without restrictions. It, which one is being referred to it? It should be population density. That's why when you write your answer, it has to be specific. Okay, and then. The population shows for Q, okay? The population shows an initial growth, slow growth rate, then rapid increase in growth phase until the population reaches the carrying capacity. Okay, this is a fact which is clearly taken from the textbook. Okay, and you have learned this in the classroom already. So what happens if we use it here? 
you might have explained that for Q, it shows an initial slow growth rate, then rapid increase in growth phase until it reaches the carrying capacity. So the it, you have to be specific here. The it, it doesn't uh, show the specific here, right? Okay, another question, example of question, okay? A type of mutation is shown in diagram below, as you can see from here, okay? Now, the tips here, write only the needed answer. Be 100% confident in your answer. So, I mean to say, if the question asks you for one example or one particular uh, answer, just give one particular answer. Okay? Be confident. Do not give two. Watch out for dependent types of question. So, as you can see, we have A1 and A2. So, apparently, the A2 okay, is dependent on the A1. So, I mean to say, if you answer A1 wrongly, Whatever you have written here is wrong as well because they are being dependent. Okay? Write your answer in short and simple sentence. Do not rewrite the questions. I have already mentioned these tips to you, right? Okay? So now let's go back to the question. State the type of the mutation in R is chromosomal mutation. Do not put other than this. If you write chromosomal mutation and something here, so meaning to say your answer is already wrong. Okay? Be confident in your answer. Okay, what is the phenomenon that causes the mutation in A1? It's known disjunction. Okay. Okay, um, students, do you have any questions to ask me? For yes, section Mr. Charles. B. Yes, wait, Tom. Uh, wait, Tom. Um, I like to ask that. Can we use any short form for the terms in biology in section B? Uh, for example, I write CO two for carbon dioxide instead of carbon dioxide. Okay, thank you for the question, Awi Tom. Now, if the question asks you, name the gas involved, name the gas. If you write the CO2, your answer is wrong already. You have to write carbon dioxide gas, for example. Okay, but if the question didn't ask you for name of gas, okay, you can straight away use this, this um, general short forms like CO2, ATP, NADH, Okay, as well as um, DNA. Okay, you can use these short forms. Common biology um, short forms can be used. Okay, wait, Tom. Thank you for yeah, the question. Okay, thank you. Ah. All right. Okay, another question here. Okay, continuation from uh, the 17th question. Name this syndrome which resulted from the fertilization between a female gamete which has an extra X chromosome and a normal male gamete. We have one mark here. Okay, so what do you think the name of the syndrome is? Okay, it will be Kleinefelter's syndrome or triple X syndrome. Now, candidates, okay, the online, my online students as well as candidates at home. Okay, now, all biology terms must be written correctly. Okay, example, Kleinefelter syndrome. This is wrong. Why? Because the K here is a small letter. So the correct one is Kleinefelter's syndrome. Okay. Now, candidates, even missing of an E here, also it will bring different meaning. So meaning to say, if you write your answer as Kleinefelter's syndrome without the E, your answer is wrong because it brings different meaning. Okay, then ameba sp. This is wrong because you know the scientific name. Okay, the correct way is ameba. You have to underline the ameba sp dot. Okay, and then rattus rattus will be rattus underline as well as the rattus. This is correct. And then this is the, you know this is the genus name which is it comes with the first letter must be a capital letter and then the species name will be all small letters. Okay. So this will be the described three physical characteristics of an individual who has the syndrome in C1. Okay? Physical characteristics. So your answer must be something is related with the physical characteristic. Okay? So apparently these are the accepted answers. Okay? Males with soft voice is not accepted because it is not a physical characteristics. Okay? Okay, now we go to section C. Okay, the last section in the biology paper. 
And in section C, candidates, you're only uh, required to answer two questions out of three questions. Okay? And these two essay questions will give you 15 plus 15 marks, which is 30 marks. 30 marks is quite uh, many. Okay? And normally candidates, they lose their marks from here, section C especially. And this will drag your grades from B to maybe C and so on. Okay? Spend maximum 25 minutes per essay question. 25 minutes. So overall, for section C, you have 50 minutes to spend here. Okay? So please okay, uh, devise your strategy here. Okay? The tips here is always do the past year questions. Always and always past year questions. Okay, decide the two essay questions that you can answer confidently. Okay, do not answer all three essay questions. Okay, do not draw diagrams to represent your answers. Okay, unless the question say or ask with a label diagram, explain this and that. Then you have to draw your diagrams. And when we talk about drawing your diagram, your diagram must be correctly drawn and labeled. Otherwise, you don't get marks for that. Okay? All scientific terms must be spelled correctly. Otherwise, you will be penalized for the first wrong spelling. Okay? Example, Kleinefelter syndrome. If you wrongly spell Kleinefelter syndrome on the first uh, paragraph, okay? so you won't get marks on the first paragraph. But on the subsequent paragraphs, okay, if you still misspell the Kleinefelter syndrome, you still get marks, provided Whatever you have written there is facts, okay, and the answer is accepted. Okay, now, one question here. Differentiate between cDNA and genomic DNA libraries, okay? So, differences. The question says uh, differentiate. So, meaning to say this is about differences. So, stating the differences without any reasoning or further explanations. Okay, and then short forms for common biology terms are accepted, such as ATP, NADH, RUBP, CMP, and CO2, like what I've mentioned earlier in section B. In section C, it applies as well. Okay, now let's see on the answers options here. Okay. Starting material is in cDNA is mRNA, while starting material in genomic DNA library is DNA. Can you see? This one paragraph here, it shows the differences between the cDNA and genomic DNA libraries with the usage of while. If you write answer like this, okay, cDNA size is smaller than genomic library, DNA library. It's not accepted because you're not comparing here. Okay, there's no comparison here. Or if you write answer like cDNA size is small while genomic DNA library is not, your answer is likely not to be accepted as well because there is no comparison here. It's not, it's not in, in what way, okay? So the proper way how you should write answer is cDNA size is smaller while genomic DNA library is bigger in size. Again, you can see the usage of while here, okay? Other than while is like whereas, okay? Okay, another uh, options here, okay? Answers that, that is not accepted. cDNA library consists of coding region only while genomic DNA library consists of exons and introns. Why this option of answer is not accepted? Because you are not comparing two items here. Okay? When you talk about, when you write about cDNA library, you only mention coding region. But when you write on genomic DNA library, you talk about consists of exons and introns. So apparently, this exon and intron, they are not related with this coding region. So your answer is not accepted. Okay? So the proper way how to write this answer is cDNA library consists of exons while genomic DNA library consists of exons and introns, okay? Enzymes needed to produce DNA library are reverse transcriptase, restriction enzymes, and ligase while, you can see the usage of while here, okay? Enzymes needed to produce genomic DNA library are restriction enzyme and ligase, okay? Then cDNA library only contains the protein sequence from mRNA, while genomic DNA library contains sequence of the entire gene. Okay, now this is the scenario if you choose to write your answer in the essay formats. Okay, all essays, okay, 
Always remember, must be written in full sentences. Point forms are strictly prohibited. Now, candidates, okay, this um, essay, okay, like what we have discussed earlier, you can tabulate these um, answers. Okay, again, it must be written in full sentence. So this is how it will look like. It will appear in a table form or tabulated. Okay, you can see every sentence are in full sentences. They are written, properly written here. So you can use, you can choose either in essay form where you will use the whereas or while word there in between of the two subjects or in table form like this. You can see how different they are being written. Okay, another question here to be discussed. Okay, this will be the last question. Explain how disruptive selection can cause speciation. Five marks. You know, explain means the question needs reasoning. The situation in the question may be manipulated. Okay, detailed answers need to be written. Okay, to make things simple for you, when it comes to explain, say you have to write almost everything in detail. Okay. Write specific answer, do not use it, both them and they applies to essay questions too. Okay, this this tip I already mentioned earlier in section B. Now I mention it again in section C. Okay, so we can see here. These are the options of the answers. Okay, now what happens if we use this? Them, they, right? They don't really comprehend or give out the actual your actual answer. Okay, it can cause misleading. Okay, so now, there is no shortcut in studying biology. Okay, candidates? Do you have questions, candidates? Ah, ini cara-cara TPM ni mungkin ada soalan kepada Cikgu Charles, ah, Ranjita. Uh, Mr. Charles, I yes. have a question. Uh, if the question asks us to explain the of a diagram, is it compulsory for me to draw the diagram? And if it's compulsory for me to draw, then how are the marks being distributed on the graph drawn? Okay, thank you very much. Now, okay, viewers, okay. Now, if the question asks you to draw a diagram with the aid of with an aid of a diagram, okay, then you, you have to explain the um, question. If it says like that, means say you have to draw the diagram or the graph, okay. Now, for graph, the y and x axis must be uh, correctly written and labeled, and then your graph, the type of graph, must be correct correctly uh, draw. Otherwise, it's either all or nothing. Meaning to say, either you get two marks, maximum two marks, or you get none, zero. To get two marks, again, x and y axis must be correctly written, as well as the, the curve of the graph. Mm. Okay. Okay. Class, students? Uh, calon yang lain, ada nak tanya soalan? Mungkin Vishwa? Um, hi, sir. Yes, I'm Vishwa. Uh, if my essay have some grammatical error, will my mark be detected? Okay, now if your essay has some grammatical errors, okay. Now in biology, we are testing on your biology knowledge, okay, not on your uh, English grammars. So the small grammars, okay, like is, are, okay, you won't be penalized for that. But if your um, grammar errors can change the meaning of the sentence, then you'll be penalized, like, like the Klinefelter's syndrome, Klinefelter syndrome, or Klinefelter's syndrome with the E and the apostrophe S. Okay? Okay, candidates, do you have any other questions? Uh, mungkin siapa? Uh, Loshania, ada nak tanya soalan? Ah, tak ada. Dia cakap, alamak, alamak, saya kena tanya soalan ke? <laughs> okay, siapa lagi uh, calon-calon STPM yang nak tanya soalan biologi kepada cikgu berkenaan dengan uh, kertas bahagian B dan C terutama, cikgu? Eh? Ah, yes, betul. Mm, B dan C itu yang paling mencabar untuk uh, calon-calon lah terutamanya. Mm. Okey, ada soalan Viani? Atau ah, okey. Atau cikgu nak tanya soalan saya, kepada saya tambah mereka. Tambah satu. Okey, ah. uh, satu tips lagi. Now, calon di rumah ataupun calon yang uh, online, okey, jika calon menjawab tiga soalan dalam esei, apa yang akan berlaku? Okey, pemeriksa hanya akan memeriksa dua yang pertama saja. Oh. Okey, yang ketiga tu tidak akan diperiksa. Kalau terlebih rajin tu habislah. Ha. Ah. <laughs> Okey, dan je. jika calon menyusun kertas jawapan mereka, contohnya calon pilih untuk menjawab soalan nombor 18, 19 dan 20. Okey, katakanlah soalan nombor 18 ni calon jawab sangat sedikit. 
19 sangat banyak dijawab dan 20 pun sangat banyak. So keberangkalian calon ini mem, mem, akan mendapat marka okay, lebih tinggi di soalan nombor 19 dan 20. Betul kan? Mm -mm. Tapi kalau kerana soalan nombor 18 disusun paling atas, hanya soalan nombor 18 dan 19 akan diperiksa. Oh. 20 tidak akan diperiksa. Sebab calon tidak memahami kehendak uh, soalan peperiksaan, iaitu hanya jawab dua soalan esei, bukannya tiga soalan esei. Pernah berlaku, Cikgu? Pernah, dan oh. setiap tahun memang berlaku pun. Oh, iya ke? Ya. Dan rugilah kepada calon itu. Mm -mm. Okay, sila fahami kehendak soalan itu. Jika mm. kehendak soalan minta calon menjawab dua soalan esei, sila jawab dua. Dan dalam section B, jika soalan uh, meminta calon untuk memberikan satu contoh, Berikan satu contoh sahaja. Jangan berikan lebih daripada satu contoh. Jangan terlebih rajin lah. Jangan terlebih rajin. Like the tips earlier. Confident in your answer. Okay? Apa yang akan berlaku jika calon berikan dua jawapan? Ah. Jika soalan meminta satu jawapan. Ah. Jika jawapan yang kedua itu betul, okay. jawapan yang pertama dan kedua ini diterimalah. Okay. Sebab dua-dua pun betul kan? Ah. Jika yang kedua itu salah, keseluruhan jawapan itu dikira salah. Oh. Ya, Sebab calon misconception di sini. Oh, sebab mungkin ada setengah calon dia macam try and error. Macam ah. oh, satu yang berasa betul, satu lagi mungkin salah. Jadi letak dua-dua je lah. Betul. Tidak Kira boleh. Mas, maksudnya markah tu akan dipotong juga? Calon tidak akan diberi markah. Oh, sebab langsung. calon, yes, uh, dia tidak memahami kenak calon ah. dan dia punya apa ini, um, knowledge content untuk biologi bagi uh, soalan itu sangat kurang. Contohnya mm -hmm. tadi kan mutation kan mm -hmm. non disjunction. Contoh calon mungkin akan menulis non disjunction, non disjunction dan disjunction. Mm -hmm. Padahal jawapan dia hanyalah non disjunction. Okay. Jadi kerana non uh, disjunction di sebelah tu, jadi keseluruhan jawapan tu salah. Oh. Uh, calon tidak boleh ada conflicting ideas or conflicting answers. Pemeriksa hanya pilih satu soalan satu jawapan saja dan jawapan tu mestilah fakta dan konkret. Okey, ada tak macam soalan yang kena lukis-lukis gambar rajah ke dan sebagainya cikgu? Ada. Ada. Jadi ada juga. Tak adalah ada kira macam oh kalau singit-singit tak cantik ke busuk ni bukan pendidikan seni kan cikgu kan? Okey, <laughs> dalam biologi, okey, bila calon jika ada soalan yang suruh calon apa ini melukis gambar rajah kan, mesti dilukis dengan uh, macam macam apa? Dengan betul, dengan tepat. Uh, Sama kisah. seperti eksperimen. Uh. Bila pelajar membuat laporan eksperimen mereka, setiap gambar rajah tu bahagian observations mm -hmm. Okay, mereka memang lukis dengan cermat dan tepat. Begitu juga dengan kehendak soalan. Okay, bila calon menjawab di peperiksaan nanti, mesti lukis dengan tepat. Kalau tidak, memang tidak dapat markah. Lah. Rugi. Okey, okay, nampaknya segala tips-tips uh, yang dikongsikan oleh Cikgu Charles Junior tadi sangat um, kata efektif. Eh? Ha, mungkin dapat di gunakan dan diserap oleh calon-calon STPM yang sedang menuntut sekarang ini di dalam di rumah juga dalam talian semoga anda semua dapat menjawab subjek peperiksaan biologi insyaallah dan yang penting doa dan juga usaha serta tawakal dan terima kasih cikgu Charles dan juga kita nak cakap terima kasih kepada pelajar-pelajar murid-murid uh, daripada Pusat Tingkatan 6 Mak Tak Sabar dan juga Kolej Tingkatan 6 Syah Alam di dalam talian boleh lambai-lambai kepada kamera dan ucap, uh, letak tangan di dada kepada Cikgu Charles. Cikgu ucap terima kasih. Okey dan uh, ya uh, kita sampai di sini saja. Kita jumpa lagi di Road to Success STPM 2020. Sehingga jumpa lagi. Bye. Bye. Didik TV KPM Salam sejahtera, saya Yong Gui King, ibu kepada pelajar Pung Wai Tong. Semoga anak saya tekun berusaha belajar supaya mencapai keputusan dan cemerlang dalam sajak biologi STPN Sabas. Good evening, I'm Jack Dishko, mother of Penjita Ko. Biology is the study of life. I've studied biology before during my school days and it was very interesting. I'm very happy to see the new generations liking biology. I wish good luck to all the STPM students for their upcoming exams.